project this was What can you do when you've got nothing to do? First of all we walked around our local area, then we met some local residents, then we made a PowerPoint about our local area which is Pill. Then each class learns about a different place. Chestnut learns about Clevedon, Oak learns about Ashton Court, and Hawthorne learns about Porter's Head. Next we visited all of the places, then we learnt, learnt about filming and script writing. After that a lady called Catherine Jeffs came into our school and she told us how to make a documentary or short film. After we had to write a script, create a short list and use some apps called iMovie and Green Screen. We've had so much fun. We've learnt so much. We, we hope, hope you enjoy, enjoy our films. start of the lovely poet's walk but before embarking on the wonderful walk that awaits you you might look at you might like to look at some other things to do here there is a playground to play in and a train track that runs during the summer months you might even be lucky enough to get a chance to bounce on the giant castle or even take a fabulous ride on a donkey our journey begins at poet's walk from here you can see the marine lake where you can swim in and sometimes in the summer months you can sail boats with the yacht club. You can also go in big bubbles with air so you can breathe in or you can have a picnic on, on the side and while you do that you can your children can fish for crabs or fish or swim in the water. As we progress up the steep steps, we find ourselves next to a place called the Sugar Hill. It's called this because we used to be able to see ships with loads of bags of sugar. The wind and storms made this happen to the trees. That's how bad the wind and storms are. This sign tells you where that place is in Poets Walk. Poets Walk is a good place to take your dogs or other pets like cats for a walk. You can wear any clothing at any time or weather, even if it is a cold rainy day or a burning hot sunny day. It's much more to people of Clevedon about Clevedon and Poets Walk than, and the things to do there. You will find the Sugar Lookout, the Marine Lake and much more things to look out for like bird houses, muddy paths, boats, flat home and steep home and bended trees. This is the World War II bunker, now it's popularly known as the Clevedon Bunker or the Pill Box. It's time for segment three to perform in a minute. of Poets Walk. These benches are important for some people as they have been fitted with plaques to remind people of their friends and family and maybe loved ones. The graveyard is very very big and it is, has a lot of hundred in gravestones. It is a beautiful place to just walk around it and explore or just spend some time thinking. The entire length of Poets Walk is filled with many beautiful sights to see. You can see Flatholm and Steepholm in the distance and even some boats sitting waiting on the mud flat. Trees bent by the breeze and many birds around, around the wooded areas. Poets Walk is a splendid place to visit and enjoy or just reflect on the day a must-see part of Clevedon. Keep watching to find out 
more things to do in the wonderful Clevedon. Bye! Bye. This week on Cheeky Chestnut Travels, we're going to explore the magnificent shiny marine lake in Clevedon. Here we are today in the magnificent marine lake in Clevedon. The lease itself has been here since 1929, but has recently undergone as part of a huge renovation as part of a project that's been bringing a new life back to Clevedon. Clevedon is on the hidden gems of North Somerset. The lake has been used by the recents of Clevedon and beyond for many years, but in the 1980s the lake began to fall into disrepair and there is no money to look after it. The lake remained in use for many years but was looking old and unloved. But in 2012, North Somerset Council and Clevedon Council began to work with the mine and Clevedon Civic Society to try to, to secure the funding to the Heritage Lottery Fund to restore the marina back to its own former glory. With the funding secured, the lake was restored and opened on the 7th of March 2016. From the marina, you can see the boot beautiful Victorian pit and I can't say to Clevedon. It was opened in 1869 and definitely worth a visit. In the summer or winter you can swim in the marine lake. There are some boats with some weight to stop them from rolling away. You can get a kayak to join the kayak club or you can hire a wooden boat. Hey wait this is a land on the show. At the end you can treat yourself to some yummy squammy fish and chips. Bye! On Travels and Chestnuts, we'll be exploring the secrets of the historic Clevedon Pier. Here we are today at the wonderful pier by the sea, which is the wonderful views right in front of your eyes. We are on the pier looking out to the adventurous sea. The magnificent blue shiny sea makes you feel like you're in a dream. Here on the pier you can have a nice refreshing drink and some yummy food. You can also have a seat and look out at the sea. You can see from up high the top of the pit, it looks tranquil and glorious with the sea surrounding it. It costs three pounds to go on Clevedon Pier. On the night from December 2018, it's free when purchasing a Marlins lottery ticket. In the Port Hall are many events that take place, one being the under five story time which takes place once a month and lasts 30 minutes. For booking, you need to contact the Pier Toll House. There is also a number of other events that take place which you can find out about on the page website. Take a look at these wonderful sites. It's definitely worth a visit. An interesting fact about the pier, that in 2014, One Direction shot a video on the pier. To celebrate this event from four years ago, the pier allowed visitors who presented a copy of One Direction CD to access to the pier for one pound Friday the 23rd or Saturday the 24th of March. You might just like to get your photo taken next to the plaque that celebrated them filming here. Whatever the reason, this tremendous landmark isn't one to miss. Thank you for watching Come to Clevedon Pier. Bye! Bye. Here we are this week at Cleveland Skate Park. Did you know the skate park was built around 2006? It's really great. The skate park is a really extraordinary place to do tricks and enjoy exercising. These are the swimming sites of the skate park. They are very detailed. Unfortunately, dogs are not allowed in the skate park. However, there's a huge green field where dogs are very welcome. Admiring views of the exquisite skate park. Poets Walk is really close to the skate park and worth a visit. One of the best things about this skate park is that you get to see people doing extraordinary tricks. Doing your own is even more thrilling. This is the most fantastic sight of the skate park. You can also use a stunt bike here. Stay tuned for more wonderful ideas about what you can get up to in Clevedon. Today we are 
here at this beautiful Harvest Colour Bandstand where we, are, where we are going to tell you all about it, why it's so special to Cleveland's history. This bicycle was built in 1887 and is a hung, over 130 years old. The bandstand is made of metal brick and timber panels. It has been renovated over the last few years to replace missing panels and to repaint the poles and ceiling. It is a beautiful, iconic building. The local people meet at the bandstand and sometimes play instruments, but not very often. As you walk along the salty seafront, you will see the beautiful and Victorian bandstand. Under front, you will feel the zip the slippery and mossy stone on the path. On a lovely sunny day when the sky is blue and the wavy emerald grass flows in the breathy, pregnant, fragile wind it is the best time to visit the bandstand. The bandstand has many local music that plays on the bandstand. So come and, so come and visit the bandstand and enjoy one of the delights of Cleveland. Keep watching and find out what else there is to do as well as the Cleveland. The Curzon Cinema is in North Somerset, England. It is one of the oldest continually running purpose-built cinemas in the world. Liam is going to fill you in on some fantastic facts about the glorious Curzon Cinema. Hello, I'm here to add to your facts about the Curzon Cinema. When was it built? 20th of April 1912. How many seats did it start off with? It started off with 200 seats. Where is it? In the heart of Cleveland. The cost for the adults, if they want to go in, the Curzon Cinema is £7.40 and for children's ticket it's £5.50. You do not have to wear specific clothes. You are not allowed pets inside the Curzon Cinema. The difference of the opening between Hertz Walk and the Curzon Cinema is 17 years. In 2009, the Curzon Cinema was awarded £31,700 by the Heritage Officer to improve it by adding more seats. The beach is about a 15 minute stroll away from the Curzon Cinema. The amazing beach is full of pebbles. Thank you for joining us on the show today. There's some very interesting facts. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for some more amazing reasons to visit Clevedon. Welcome to Chestnut Travels. Today we will be exploring the delights of Clevedon. What makes you Clevedon here? Clevedon is one of the hidden gems in the home of North Somerset, the Lottery Fund and the local community are helping improve Cleveland and all the amazing stuff to do here. Did you know you could go <coughs> under the pit? It is so cool and fun because it's near the beach and the beach is very worth a visit. Cleveland Pit was built in 1869 and has been standing ever since. It opens at 10am and closes at 4.30pm. It costs three pounds to go on the pier. The only day it isn't open on is Christmas Day. To help with the constant upkeep of Cleveland Pier, you are able to sponsor some of these plaques to commemorate a special day or a loved one. The very impressed but are an excellent way of the pier fund. Dogs are allowed on the pier and it's great for a walk and it's smooth like the beach. The breeze on Cleveland Pit is so refreshing, you feel like you're in a big heaven when you're here. Did you know the building at the end of the pit is privately owned but there are many events that take place on the pier. Visit the pier's website for more information. At the end of the pit there is a lovely man makes a beautiful view and the sparkly pebble beach. You must Come to Cleveland Pier some days. It's so good. Bye bye. <laughs> Welcome to Cleveland Beach, one of my most favourite places to visit. Have a small dip in the refreshing cold water. Let the fresh, cool breeze flow past your smooth skin. Here is Alison Grace with more on the beach. 
ever been to the Pebble Beach and did you know the water quality is five star? Watch as the cool, cold breeze flows past your smooth skin. The water is like touching clouds. Clevedon Beach is a wonderful place to visit and is very popular in the summer. Cleveland Beach is dog friendly. To be warned, there's no lifeguard, so make sure you can swim if you wish to go to sea, or bring armbands. You don't come with seriously missing out, so put it on your to-do list and come on down, or whack on your swimming costumes. As another option, go and dip your toes in the refreshingly cold water. This beach is legendary for its pebbles. The pebbles can come in different shapes and sizes, and if you're keen, you may find a fossil. Clevedon Beach has smooth pebbles and patches of sand. Watch as the famous sea crashes against a smooth pebbly shore. This beach is an amazing place to visit. This is three reasons why to come to Clevedon Beach. One, it is a pebble beach. Secondly, it has cool cold water. Thirdly, it is an all weather beach. There is also a wonderful pier that you can visit next to the beach. So there you have it, the wonders of Cleveland Beach. Wait, that isn't the end of the show. Make sure to stick around for the next segment because it'll be exciting, fun and amazing. Just like this one. Bye for now. Here is the beach. It is a beautiful place to be in and watch the delicate waves pass by you. Why don't you go there yourself and explore? Smell the fresh, fragrant breeze there. I just want to say you could find a fossil there too. Here we have the sea. It is a fascinating place to just watch. The seafront is a very common place to just watch the boats go by. Steep Palm is a brilliant island to go to. You can also get boat rides there too. Steep Palm is a nature reserve as well. Beach, you can explore or simply have a stroll across the beach. And if you, and if you have a dog, you can walk it there too. As you can see, this is Steep Palm and this is Flat Palm. Steep Palm lays nearly six miles offshore from the seaside resort of Western Supermare in North Somerset. In the distance, you can see the magnificent lighthouse. It's got a really bright light on top of it. Cleveland is a lovely place to be. Maybe you can bring a picnic with you and sit on the beach and look at, out at Steep Palm and Black Hole. Maybe you can have fish and chips on Cleveland Pier. It is an amazing place. We hope you come and enjoy it. Thank, Thank you for watching! Hi and welcome to Extreme Animal Watching at Ashton Court. We're here to help you see some amazing animals. On eBay you can get some binoculars for £2.65p. 
you can get this camouflage onesie for five pounds. Ooh, listen. How long have you been doing it? Do you know what them? Since I could walk. Why did you start? Because it's an amazing thing. Was it your favourite part? Everything. Who inspired you? My granddad. So join us today. See what islands you can discover. Bye! Astrum Court is a generating fuel, exhilarating, intense place for thrill seekers. It's also a fantastic place for a new activity. It's called Extreme Mini Village Building. We make our mini villages from scratch with Lego and connects. Hi, I'm Ryan and I'm going to take this film through with you. Let's go! Have a look at all the landmarks. A windmill, Buckingham Palace and the bed. We use free stuff like old Lego, sticks, leaves and mud. We have a special guest today, and he's called Riley. Riley, how long have you done extremely many village for? Uh, I think it's about five years. How much land works have you done? I think it might be about 60. How, how many villages have you done? I think it might be about 10. And that's the end of our interview. Ashton Court is the best place for scaring people. Hello, welcome My to name Astonishing is Ashton Court. Hmm. Have you heard about it? No. Well, I'm here to tell you how to scare. Let's Come to our blood curling, spine chilling, mad nighttime nightmares at Ashton Court. Ashton Court is the best place for scaring people, not the best place for practice. How about being the only ghost in Ashton Court? Amazing. How many people do you scare about? 5,000. How long have you been scaring for? 5 million years. Have you heard that you're getting a new job? Shut up. Why did you decide to scare people? Because I hate people. Ashton Court is a great place for telling stories around a campfire. The best thing about scaring is you feel spine chill. I'm scared at Ashton Court. Oh, really? Well, I'm just thinking, should we take our children here? Because it's a little bit dangerous. I don't think so. Where is it? Wait, where has he gone? Where has he gone? <coughs> there we go! <coughs> the 71 bus is quick and easy to catch and comes to your local bus stop every 23 minutes. Go. Join us doing scaring, Hoff, hurry, off at ends 3am. Your family will creep out about this so don't tell them. It's top secret. Well, what are you waiting for? Come now, I urge you. Come to the time of your life. <coughs> We're going to show you all the things you'll need for dam building, such as old clothes, snacks, water sticks, and leaves. Ashton Court is a great place to dam build. Need to see how it has gone and cover it with mud, water, spoon, strong washable box, and sprinkles. Well, grass. Get a handful of mud and put it into the tub. Stir and sprinkle the grass over it. You're my pro! If you want to try your hand at doing amazing extreme dam building, stop by Ashton Cook. Get, get up off, off that couch and come on down now! I have a little challenge for you. Okay, what challenge? Racing. Okay. <laughs> Ashton Court is the best place for you can do exercises. How long have you been doing this? Uh -huh. About five, six, seven years. If you come to the exercise.
exercise club. You will get fit and healthy. Come quick now. Ashton Court is the best place for sports. Ashton Court is winning today, but it's still coming down. Don't undo some amazing stickers! You can have the best time of your life. We will help you with your stickers. You can bag one together. You can even make Harry Potter ones. Zach. You can even take pictures. You can even do anything you want. You can even watch the books making their own stickers. They're next. Look, there's some sticks in this hole. Come on, let's go find some more things. You can use this as an amazing opportunity to make friends. Your mind will be blown when you see what amazing stick art you, you can, can do at Ashton Court. Court. Ashton Court is an amazing place and experience new things over tomorrow. Best of all, it's free, so come down today. Hello everybody, today we'll show you how to survive in Ashton Court. It's the best way to have fun in the most amusing, most amazing place. We'll show you how to survive the world. Hey, stop messing around with that deer. Here you can see Belint carefully looking out for potential danger. At Ashton Court, they can teach you how to recognise which wild berries are poisonous and which ones aren't. At Ashton Court, they will even teach you how to make a campfire. In the world, this skill is important to keep you warm. Check it out, it's super fun. You can eat the most marshmallows. And you can see, I am Mr. Marshmallow. Now you know how to survive. We urge you to do it next weekend. No, we urge you to do it now. It's the most perfect thing in your life. Why do you do it at Ashton Court? Off Wednesday, Sunday. So do, do it now. now. Welcome to Ashton Court and come and do it in Treasure hunting, where you find treasure in all sorts of places. Well, hello there. What do you think about, about extreme treasure hunting? I think it's cool, and my brother inspired me to do it. Who inspired you to do treasure hunting? My granddad and my brother. How long have you been doing treasure hunting for? Two years. What have you found over the years? Golden treasure. When did you start treasure hunting? Two years. Look what I found! Look! Oh. We found loads of different treasures. Why don't you try and do treasure hunting? <laughs> it's so much fun! Treasure hunting is so amazing and adventurous. Discover all the treasures. It's so extreme and awesome. It could be the next part of the future. It takes treasure hunting to the next level. Come today before it ends. Try to find the treasure. This is your call to action. Well, be seeing you soon. Ashton Court is a big, beautiful, enjoyable place to play games. Come to Ash. 
single cup today. It's fun for all the family. And best of all, it's free. said pit. Okay. I have been living in Porter's Head for 18 years. I think I should build a new railway station so I can go shopping more easily in the centre of Bristol. Did you know that Porter's Head Railway Station is a branch line running from Porter's Head into Somerset? Actually, I did know that. Well, you're well informed. After the opening of the pier in 1870, the line was extended. People from all around would catch the train to Portishead Pier, then board ships for day trips up and down the River Severn. Some went over to Wales and others down to Minehead. Hi! Hi again. On 7th September 1964, passenger services ceased on the line. Freight services continued on the line until the early 1980s. It was all of its service. For those lovely facts, it's nearly the end of our travel show. It's the end of our travel show. We hope you have enjoyed it. And remember, Cordis Head doesn't have its own railway station anymore, but it will soon. We might bump into you next time on our travel show. Bye! Welcome to, to the, the travel, travel show. show. Today we are going to tell you about says two power stations. Two power stations? Really? Yeah, two, and they're enormous. Did you know Porter said its first power station was started generating in 1929 and its primary fuel was coal, which often came in Porter's Head docks on big ships? Here is an old timer from Porter Side called Jim. So then, Jam, how was in your day? It was amazing in my day. You should have seen the smoke coming out of the tower stacks. Morning and night at one, you could see the smoke from where it was. So it carried a lot of power then? Yes, yeah, so over 100,000 horsepower. When was the second power station built? It was built in 1949, just after the Second World War, and it used a mixture of coal and oil for power. Most of the coal for the power stations came from either the South Wales or the Somerset Coalfield. When the power station eventually closed, the Somerset Coalfield lost its main customer and its pits had to close. The power stations closed soon after and you can the power stations opened at Beacon Point. Well, goodbye, goodbye for, for now! The travel show. We will be showing you the modern Potter's Head Sculpture Trail. Various artists have produced sculptures for the trail. Team Kirby have produced a sculpture called Rudolph the Stone, which is based around the legend of Blackbeard the Pirate. Robert Clamp produced a giant matchstick artwork to remind us that Porter's head had a huge phosphorus factory from Albright and Wilson. 
fossils in the soils in the making of matters but it is a very dangerous chemical to deal with. One of the exhibits is called flying and it is to give us an idea of a sailing ship flying over the water pushed on by the wind. The water's head was also an important embarkation point for the new world that the man built who didn't know. The old dock had extensive views over the Bristol Channel to Wales and the new Severn Bridge. Born in Pill, the Arctic John Pot descends from a family of Bristol pilots who for generations have safely guided shipping vessels through the water from Porter's Head to Bristol. His artwork shipped ashore shows how men went to sea and women were often left for months at home to care for their families alone. The sculpture trail was part of a major new mixed use development on a regenerated brownfield site set around an old dock site only 10 years ago. The site was derelict and a bit of an eyesore. Goodbye everyone. We hope you will visit the Porter's Head Sculpture Trail. You can find the details. Hi there, Hi there. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the travel show. Today we will be telling you about the open air pool. When first opened, the pool is a royal success, counting over 250,000 visitors in its first year's operation. There is also a cafe with comfy sofas where you can relax after your luxurious swim. Come here please, I've got some questions to ask you. What's it like to work in a cafe near a swimming pool? Well, it's fun, but it can get really busy at the same time. It's lovely to swim in the open air pool even when it's raining because it's heated at 26 degrees. In the open air pool it's like swimming in the heated sea because it got a new heating system recently. It used to be only a really 21 degrees and you had to swim fast to keep warm. You can lie in some mist and watch people swim and hear the birds singing in the trees. There's lots of fun things to do in the pool, like diving, swimming in the pool, going down water slides and playing in the water with your friends. See you on the next travel show. Thanks for watching. Bye! Hello everyone and welcome to our travel show about Porter's Head Marina. The marina was built in the 1860s. I hope you enjoy our travel guide. You can keep between 230 and 260 boats in Porter's Head Marina. My nan has a big boat in there. The marina is open for business 365 days a year and 24 hours a day. It's been awarded five gold anchors, which is the highest a marina can get. Porter's Head has impressive lock gates. They allow boats to move between the marina and the sea safely, and they stop all the water from out of the marina. The lock gates are the second biggest lock gates in the UK because the River Severn has the second biggest tide range on Earth. By Porter's Head Marina, there's a control button for the boat system, including information, Wi Fi, and cables. And on the bottom floor, there are some toilets. Lots of cafes by Porter's Head Marina, which lots of people go to all the time. Porter's Head Keys Marina is established as one of the best equipped marine facilities in the South West. It's superbly located for visiting Bristol's historic harbour and for many interesting sites of North Somerset and for accessing the Gloucestershire and Sharpness Canal. Tannery, boat sale, boating engine repair and For now. Hello everyone and welcome to our travel show about Porter's Head Marina. The marina was built in the 1860s. I hope you enjoy our travel guide. You can keep between 230 and 260 boats in Porter's Head Marina. My nan has a big boat in the marina. The marina is open for business 365 days a year and 24 hours a day. It's been awarded five gold anchors, which is the highest a marina can get. Porter's Head has impressive lock gates. They allow boats to move between the marina and the sea safely, and they stop all the water from out of the marina. The lock gates are the second biggest lock gates in the UK because the River Severn has the second biggest tide range on Earth. By Porter's Head Marina, there's a control.
Lots of cafes by the Porter's Head Marina, which lots of people go to all the time. Porter's Head Cheese Marina is established as one of the best equipped marina facilities in the southwest. It's superbly located for visiting Bristol's historic harbour and for many interesting sites of North Somerset and for accessing the Gloucestershire and Sharpness Canal. Hamlery, Boat Surf, Boating and Jewelry. to the Port's Head Travel News. Today will be about the Port's Head Lighthouse. We will be doing some interviewing. I will also be having, be doing a big surprise. Mm -hmm. just love the Port's Head Lighthouse. Mom, can I please speak? Yes, dear, go ahead. It's my birthday today and I'm so excited. Is it? You can sort of see she's excited. Yes, I can. I hope you have a lovely birthday. Happy birthday, and I've got to say. We've just seen some lovely people haven't we just done some interviewing? That was my surprise. The lighthouse bell, which was replaced with an electric horn, has gone on display after being locked away for a decade. Almost 10 years. Battery Point Lighthouse, more commonly known as Battery Point Lighthouse, was built in 1931. The 30 feet lighthouse also by the, was made by the Chance Brothers of Smithwick. It is also black pyramid on a concrete base, a two-ton bell also included. Bye! See you in the next travel news! This is a bit of information about the Porter's Head lifeboat and its crew. It's raining really heavily here. They have a brand new lifeboat and it's very cool. It stopped raining and this lifeboat is uh, two years old and it's 2018. It's a class Atlantic 85 boats called the Lady Annie. Lifeboat crew train every Monday, Thursday and Sunday so that they are super quick at getting out into the River Severn to help sailors who are having big problems with their boat. They have a massive tractor to push the lifeboat into the sea. When the tide is really low, they have to take the lifeboat to their net to launch to launch it. It's tricky launching a lifeboat here because of the River Seven has the second biggest tidal range from the whole in the whole world. The whole world? Yes, really the whole world. The lifeboat gets to fourteen kilometers per hour, which is much quicker than the old life, but so it gets to rescues much, much quicker than having a better chance of helping people. They have their own private room to keep their clothes in so that they can get clothes quickly into their lifeboat crew clothes. Bye bye for now. In a year we will have another video about the Porter's Head lifeboat so look out for that. Bye bye. bye. Now. Bye. Bye. Uh, hi, I'm Jack and I'd like to welcome you to All Over Face Porter's Head. Later in this travel show you will be seeing the other interesting presenters, Electra and Liam, telling you about the wonders of Porter's Head. Today we will be seeing a famous Porter's Head landmark called Battery Point. We will also be learning its history. Well, hopefully. <laughs> Battery Point itself has had many makeovers to its fortifications using its commanding position close to the main shipping channel. This fascinating place is called Battery Point because it used to have a battery of guns during World War II to protect the shipping lane, which is called the King's Road. If we are lucky enough, Leo might shoot a gun. A gun battery was established here during the Napoleonic Wars and also in World War II. They were to deter German ships if they tried to blow up the docks. As battery point was so strategically important for many years during the 20th century, it was out of bounds to the general public and remained under the control of the War Department until the 1950s. Almost certainly it was used by raiding parties during the island. There is a hill fort of that area in the neighbouring eastward. 
The Romans arrived at some point. It was also fortunate during their liberation time, and there is still an excellent account of a Spanish from the Civil War period. The local men were outnumbered by Fairfax men, so they surrendered and promised they would go home and stay there. This lighthouse was built in nine was built in 1931. It was about nine meters high and was recently refurbished in 2012. This beautiful bench was put here in memory of someone who dined around this beautiful nature woodlands, but it wasn't like that back then. It's a deep water rock mark with easy parking along the seafront. This is a big hot picture and the point is a magnet for those hunting that linger. I smell something fishy though here. The water around the point is very deep and a gentle lock puts you into a considerable depth of water. The point fishes best from LW up to HW on a new tide, with springs almost unfishable due to the strong tide run. The rocks and sandy beach back towards a mouth are fishable on large tides. Certain conditions are very as we can be in trouble in rough conditions. Bye, Bye guys, see you next time with your presenters Alexa, Leo and Jet. Goodbye and make sure you see the other episodes with other places to think about. Bye! Welcome to Porter's Head Railway. Porter's Head ha hasn't actually got a railway, but it did have, and it was amazing. Hi again, hi, and welcome to the, um, the railway now, because it is in desperate need of refixing and like made better, because it's gr Porter's Head has grown double the size it was 15 years ago, and so it's in desperate need of a new railway. In the 18th and 18th century, Bristol had a very important harbour that traded with the New World. During 2000 and 2001, the, Royal, the railway was rebuilt as far as Pill, and a short spur was constructed as to the Royal Port Blue Dock. However, it is not yet open to foot passengers. The line was opened to Port Said in 1867 and to the docks in 1879. The docks were always overshowed by Bristol and Avermouth docks. The passenger services declined in the 20th century, leading to closure for passengers in 1964 and to all traffic in 1981. The Porter's Head railway, railway is a branch, branch line railway, railway running from Porter's Head, Head in North, in North Somerset, Somerset to, to the main line of the west of Bristol. Bristol. With the closure of Portishead Railway, passenger services were discontinued in 1964 as part of the reshaping of Bristol Rail. Freight was discontinued in 1981, but the railway was not dismantled. In 1985, a series of steam excursions ran along the line as part of the G1 GW150 celebration. This is thought to be the last commercial commercial in East before the line was rebuilt. In July 1862, the Bristol Port Railway at Pier Country obtained parliamentary authority for a railway on the eastern side of Avon at Hot Wild to a new dock at Avon. Thank you all for watching our show on Port Railway. Bye bye! bye.